Hey everyone, me again. Today I wanted to make a video about something that I get asked quite a lot both online and in real life as well, which is how you can take better photographs. So today I just wanted to go over five tips which really helped me out when I started. I first got into photography when I was a teenager and I think I really started to take it seriously when I was about 18 because that was when I invested in my first DSLR camera. The things that I'm about to tell you really helped me out back then when I started, so here we go. So the first tip that I have is to learn manual settings. Now this can be a bit overwhelming, it might take a bit of time for you to fully learn and understand all the manual stuff, don't worry if it does. It completely went over my head when I first started learning, but I think the best thing to do is to find a way of learning that suits your style. So you might prefer to watch a video on it, or you might prefer to have a tutor tell you face to face, or you might prefer to buy a book. But when I started out, I personally really enjoyed having everything in a book, and I just read everything in here until it sunk in, basically. So this book is the Digital Photography Handbook. Mine's a bit battered because this is from 2008, but they have made an updated version of this, I noticed quite recently, so I'll leave a link to that one in the description box and to a few other books that I like the look of that I think you guys will find really helpful as well. But what I love about this book is that you can either just read the whole thing all at once or you can literally just skip to the bit that you're struggling with. So you can literally just skip to a page like this one in the book where it just goes through shutter speed, aperture, sensitivity and ISO, exposure compensation, blah blah blah. Or you can just skip to whatever thing you want to know about. So there's bits about lighting, there's things about flash and tripods and all that good stuff. So you can either read the whole thing as I said or just skip to the bit that you want to learn about. But either way, a book, either this book or a book just like this, could really help you out if you do want to take some better photographs. But there are also YouTube videos on manual settings as well if you prefer to learn that way. I have a video on manual settings which I'll leave the link to for you in the description box. So you might be wondering why I'm telling you to learn manual settings. You might be thinking, I shoot on a compact camera, I shoot on my iPhone, it's all automatic, it does it for me, I don't need to learn this stuff. And maybe you don't, maybe you don't need to learn this kind of thing if you're taking snapshots, but if you want to take better photographs, then it really helps to have some of that technical knowledge behind you. So say if you're trying to do low light photography, but you're getting a lot of camera shake, and you don't really know how to fix that, it really helps if you have that little technical knowledge so you know that you're getting camera shake because your camera is letting in more light because it's so dark and it's doing that by having a slower shutter speed which is causing your camera to record more of the movement while you're holding it. You see, knowing stuff like that can really help you out and I think if you ever want to be in a situation where you hope to charge someone to take pictures of them Again, you will really need that technical knowledge. The second tip I have is to practice. This again is something that I did quite a lot when I was about 18, when I was in art school. I really got into taking a photograph every single day. I actually made it a little project for myself. I had my own little blog and everything. Nowadays, everyone has a really good camera on their phone, so most people probably take pictures every day now and it's not a big deal. But carrying a DSLR camera, which is what I was using every single day, obviously took a lot of effort, but it helped me to really get to know the camera. It helped me to put into practice all the manual settings that I was learning, which helped me kind of absorb that information a bit more. And I would say if you have just bought a brand new camera like a DSLR or a bridge camera, or even a high-end compact camera, and you're kind of struggling with a lot of the settings, making the effort to take it out with you all the time and to practice with it more and more is really going to help you learn exactly what it does. You'll get to grips with it so much quicker. My third tip is to get inspired. Find artists, find photographers who you really love. You might prefer going to galleries, you might prefer scrolling through other people's Instagram accounts, you might be flipping through Vogue magazine. I used to love doing that, I used to spend ages looking at all the pictures in Vogue. So you can be inspired in any way that you want. And I'm not saying to copy the people who you're inspired by, absolutely not, but a lot of finding your own style is by finding maybe 
five or six styles from people that you like and just kind of meshing everything that you like about it and making your own style from that. The fourth tip I have is to shoot in raw mode. So if you don't know what raw mode is, I'll do my best to explain it, but you're probably better off googling it. If you think about film photography, you know, before digital came about, you shot on a roll of film and you got negatives from it, right? So imagine that a JPEG, which is the typical format that your camera will take a picture in, a JPEG is a bit like being given the developed photograph and you've got the photograph and you love it, but you can't really do very much with it so it would be very difficult to then edit that photograph in your hand whereas if you are shooting with a roll of film and you have the negatives the negatives are a bit like raw mode so with the negatives you can do a lot more editing to the photograph the camera saves a lot more information for the image so it basically really makes it easier if you want to do a lot more editing to it and the final tip i have to take better photographs is to learn some basic editing so i use adobe photoshop but you don't have to it does cost money to use photoshop so you might prefer something for free you can just use the software that comes installed on your computer or even just your favorite app if you're taking pictures on your phone but make Taking a little bit of time just to edit the pictures will really bring out the best possible results. Obviously if your picture is crap then editing isn't really going to do very much to it. You know, it needs to be a good picture in the first place, it needs to be well lit and it needs to be good quality but editing will really bring out the best results. It will bring out all the colours, you can adjust the contrast, you can just do whatever you want to do to bring it to life. And quite often if you did end up getting a book like this, they'll mention stuff about editing in here as well. Like there's actually quite a lot about editing in this book. Yeah, there's whole sections about colour management, there's curves adjustment on Photoshop, which is one of my favourite tools. So yeah, books like this, they'll end up having a lot of tips on editing on your computer as well. But don't forget there are loads of YouTube tutorials here, there's probably loads of tutorials for beginners, whatever program you're using, just type it into YouTube and you will find something. It's all here. And those are my five tips to help you take better photographs, they're things that I found really useful when I started out so I hope that you found this helpful as well. As always if you've got any questions or anything let me know in the comments, I am more than happy to have a chat down there and I will see you guys next Friday at 6pm, bye!